Welcome to the Skeleton Crew Studios and the fourth time I tried to record this voiceover. I ramble too hard. This is a post-apocalyptic diorama that I made. I started with this truck that I bought at Walmart. I believe it was 124th scale from a company called Just Trucks. That was from on that box that dropped down at the beginning. I was testing a chroming method using a silver pen just to see if it uh, worked well enough on this model. It did. I have used that method on other props in the past. Uh, then I began the destruction of the model. Uh, this would be a good time while you're watching me take this apart to explain that I am taking commissions now. Uh, if you have seen my past work and you enjoy my past work and you think I do a pretty good job and you have an idea for a prop or a diorama, anything you'd like me to make from any like show or movie or game or anything like that, uh, feel free to go down below. There's a link to my Instagram where you can DM me and I will give you an estimate. Very... Uh, Fairly priced, I should say. <laughs> uh, I also will have a link down below taking you to an Etsy page that I will have hopefully made by now where you can buy this finished uh, item, finished diorama, and hopefully finished future projects because I think this turned out excellent and I want to sell it. So if you're interested, feel free to check down below, go to either link and throw me some business. How was that for shilling for myself? Uh, oh, my laundry's done. <laughs> I, this, bed popped out when I was hitting it with a hammer <laughs> and so I had to reshape it. Uh, I think it added quite a bit of character to the bed itself, especially in the final model. I don't know if you can hear the washer singing to me. <laughs> uh, coming up next, or like right about now-ish, I start airbrushing. It does not stay its brown color. I give it a white base coat, as you can see there, to for the uh, the subsequent color, the main color. To, to it, it brightens up the main color and it makes it look absolutely gorgeous. It is the exact correct color that I had in my mind when I thought about making this. I got oh, and I painted that white also because that's getting repaint. <laughs> uh, it's getting a nice contrasting color to the main one, which is this Citadel Sybarite Green. I got this from my local uh, game store, not stop and not show, <laughs> as I was trying to say. Look at this. Look at this beautiful Fallout 50s green. It is Ooh, it's good. I love it. It turned out so good. Look at it. Ugh, it's beautiful. These were water slide decals that came with a model car that I purchased. This is... I don't think it's shown off in this video yet, but it will right now. There's That model car came with this Coke fridge, and it came with all those water slide decals. So I decided to, like, chop it all up. This Originally, this was supposed to be a Fallout diorama, so that's why I cut out the Coke apart, because it was going to be a Nuka-Cola machine. But in the end, I decided to keep it... Uh, not officially a Fallout universe thing because the even though the truck looks like it could be from Fallout, it's a different model design from anything that has been seen in Fallout. And so I figured let's just keep it Fallout adjacent. But this 
little uh, refrigerator was 125th scale. If you'll remember, the truck was 124th scale. And that's kind of important for an upcoming piece, one of the parts for the background of the diorama. But right now I'm sliding on some water slide decals. And then up next, I believe I start weathering these two. Yes, I painted the inside of the refrigerator with black paint to darken the red because the red was very, very vibrant and fake looking. Uh, and it's translucent, so yeah, I filled it with black paint to darken up that red. And then I started chroming the pieces that would be chromed on a 50s Coke refrigerator with that uh, silver sharpie. It doesn't really matter that I get it kind of everywhere, because <laughs> that will definitely be covered up. And then I start weathering these. I originally wanted to paint this bed, uh, there's a classic setup with like sort of bright yellow wooden boards and then red dividers like there, but I thought it looked really ugly, the job I did, so I just painted the entire thing red. And the base layer of that yellow was actually so thick that it kind of gave the slats in between those dividers like an actual wood grain, which I thought was really cool in the end. And I painted the uh, remaining wheel well cover the same color as the body. And then I uh, started the weathering. I could have sworn I did the weathering way earlier. This thing took probably a month to make, so <laughs> not because it was so in depth or anything like that, although it was, but because of my uh, horrible tendency to not, uh, let's just say I often need a fire started under me in order to get things done. These pieces turn out so good, especially when I started using the secret weapon that will be introduced very shortly. And here I go chroming the, uh, the green truck, going back over all the places that should have been chrome. Then I weathered. I don't know why I saw that little uh, running board like that. I think I was gonna try to make it look like it rusted off and somebody stepped on it and then it broke through, but eh, I don't know. Then I glued the truck bed back in. You could see how amazing the contrast is between those two colors. It looks so good. The secret weapon. Rust paint. This works by, uh, you do a little primer so the iron paint has somewhere to stick. And then the iron paint actually has iron shavings in it. And then you hit it with the rust activator and then it will, as the rust activator dries, it'll actually rust the, the iron paint, which you'll see very soon. Smacking this thing with the hammer left a bunch of dents in its actual paint, which looked really, which was like perfect spots to put rust. Uh, it kind of made it look a little more 3D. Because it's like paint chipped away here. This, I thought it looked really cool with just the primer on it because it looked all rusty. And I was like, oh, this is the greatest paint job I've ever done. And then I actually did the rusting part and I was like, well, this is even better now. So that's what it looks like with all the iron on it. And here I go spraying it with the rust activator. I love the gritty texture and everything. It, it is literally rust. It, it's not fake rust or anything. That is metal and it's rusted. 
Uh, I'm gonna show a little time lapse of the rest coming in. It's so cool. And I use barely any of this paint. I paid 20 bucks for this whole setup and I used all I did was just dip from the paint in the cap. Watch it go. Watch it go. Are you watching? Watch how cool this is. Whee! Look how awesome! <laughs> I'm so glad I got that. I thought to do that time lapse. It looks so good. It looks so good. And then I started working on the, uh, the, the base and the background that it sits on. And there were several times, <laughs> there were several times where I accidentally spilled my water all over these things and then they just rusted even more. It was so cool. I probably put like four or five coats of that uh, rust activator on it. This is DAS, D-A-S, air dry clay that came in stone color that I bought for another project that I don't... Oh yeah, that I was gonna say that I don't remember if I did or not, but I did not finish that. This is a brick tile stamp that I 3D printed and it looks amazing. <laughs> uh, this is why the scale mattered, kind of, because the stamp I found was a 1 12th scale. But the truck was 124th and the refrigerator was 125th, so I scaled down the brick stamp to 124th so that the bricks were accurately sized. Uh, for some reason, in the end, they still look kind of small to me, but I mean, I guess in real life, bricks are relatively small, but it still looks great. Uh, I layered another layer on top. The, the big bottom section is asphalt is the road and then that piece that I just put on top is a sidewalk it's a little <laughs> it's a little uh, uh, uneven pavement sh pavement shall we say this I can't believe how perfect I made this color on the first try I just mixed a little bit of brown and a little bit of red and I used this technique that I thought of where you just dab on the paint instead of trying to brush it so it doesn't get into the grout lines and it looks so good in the end. It doesn't get into the grout. It only covers the top of the bricks. It's the perfect color. It's amazing. I'm great. I'll give myself praise because I never do. <laughs> it's so good. I originally wanted to spray paint, or spray, <laughs> uh, airbrush, a uh, some graffiti on that wall also, but this is about when I decided not to make it a Fallout thing because I was trying to think of a Fallout like faction logo, like a Raiders logo or Tunnel Snakes or something like that to spray paint on there, and I could not find anything that would fit, so I just left the wall blank. I painted with a uh, black for the asphalt, and then I did the same dabbing thing but with a, a darker gray to kind of signify a uh, like a parched asphalt I guess you know how old roads look and I think it turned out looking pretty okay and I just used some of that paint to give some variation to the uh, sidewalk as well and then I painted some dirt up against the sidewalk where it meets the wall because if you ever look at a, uh, a brick wall sidewalk combo where it gets a lot of rain. The rain kind of like splashes onto the dirt that's there and it like spreads it out and up against the wall and against the concrete and stuff and it looks pretty neat. I hot glued these two pieces together and I did it on wax paper because the hot glue would not stick to wax paper and that's what I wanted. I just wanted it to stick to the two pieces of clay. Not the, uh, and I, so I didn't want to, like, do it up against my desk because I knew it would stick to the desk also and be difficult to remove.
This is me gluing all the pieces back on. Ow, I just hit the desk. Uh, I'll reiterate again, I am doing commissions. Check out the links in the description. My dog is going insane. And the final piece, the piece of resistance, a tiny little milk crate that I printed a million years ago <laughs> that fits in the back of the truck swimmingly, back when this was supposed to be a Nuka-Cola truck. And I just want to thank you for watching, and here's the final piece. Please enjoy, and have a good day.